Hey everyone, welcome to a Guild Wars 2 structured PvP build guide. My name is Drybeer and today we'll be taking a look at my tournament spec for Necromancer. It is centered mainly around bleeds, but it has a lot of utility in team play and can be made to be unstoppable in duels or devastating in large engagements. I like to begin by saying this is largely a personal preference, so feel free to adjust it as you see fit. For abilities, I run with Consume Conditions as my heal spell for the fact that it removes all conditions on you and heals you for each one removed. This is excellent against other condition based builds as it will remove all active stacks. Signet of Undeath is my first choice because it is highly underutilized and can be extremely useful in tournament play. It passively grants you life force during combat, but upon activation will revive up to three teammates in the target area. Beyond these two abilities, there are two sets to choose from. You can build more for dueling if you plan on being a point defender. In this case, pick up Plague Signet and Blood is Power. Activating Blood is Power will apply two bleed stacks on your enemy and two on yourself. Plague Signet will transfer all of your conditions to your enemy, meaning if used right after Blood is Power, your enemy now has four stacks almost immediately. Plague Signet will also transfer any nasty conditions including Stun and Immobilize, which makes you difficult to beat one versus one. The other option is if you plan on being in the group engagements at key points like Graveyard on Legacy of the Faux Fire, or Keep on Forest of Niflhel. In this case, pick up Corrupt Boon and Epidemic. Corrupt Boon is key to use on their support player who likes to give themselves every boon there is, as it will change all of them into conditions, even ones like Immobilize and Fear. Epidemic will spread any conditions your target has to everyone around him. Stack up as many bleed stacks as you can on one target, then use Epidemic and watch the numbers fill your screen. Finally, I use Plague as my elite skill because it applies bleeds which the spec is designed for, but mainly because it is very good defensive ability. Your health is greatly increased while it is active, so I use it when I'm in a bind and I need to stay alive. For weapons, I use Scepter and Dagger and Staff. Scepter is by far the best main hand for bleeds, and Dagger provides a mix of utility but also an AoE bleed. The staff is great for group battles and when enemies get into melee range. I run with 2 superior runes of the crate for bleed duration, and 5 superior runes of the afflicted, placing the 5th on the water filter for a total of 7 armor runes. When I was first developing this build, I wondered how condition duration affected overall damage, as increasing the duration and not the damage itself would conceptually result in a damage loss. Here you can see the side-by-side -side comparison of the increased duration, which ticks for the same amount, but simply adds more ticks to the damage over time effect. This means that once you've reached a comfortable damage value, increasing duration is ideal. The split runes provide increased bleed and poison duration. On my Scepter, I use Sigil of Superior Agony for another increase in bleed duration. On my Dagger, I use Sigil of Superior Hydromancy, which will freeze nearby enemies when I switch to my Scepter, allowing me to get some space for kiting. On my Staff, I use Sigil of Superior Geomancy, which will apply a bleed to everyone in the area when I switch to it. Finally, I use the Carrion Amulet over the Shaman's Amulet or the Rabbit Amulet, as I prefer health over toughness in most situations. I've tried stacking heavy toughness, but there are too many burst builds that eat through toughness. For traits, I run 2, 4, 10 in Spite, 2, 3, 11 in Curses, and 2 in Death Magic. Spiteful Talisman and Signet Mastery are self-explanatory. Chill of Death is surprisingly useful as it will chill your target when they reach 25% health. This can wreak havoc with a good epidemic spread as you will be damaging and slowing all targets that get low. I get Chilling Darkness as this will chill anyone you hit with Deathly Swarm, which in large fights will bounce, blinding and chilling three targets. Hemophilia and Lingering Curse are there to improve bleed damage. Finally, I pick up Greater Marks to make my staff marks near undodgeable and affect a larger group of enemies. This trait setup will also provide 300 condition damage and plus 30% condition duration. When using this build, prioritize stacking bleeds always. The damage you deal increases exponentially and you won't see much effect if you aren't actively applying bleeds. Using Dark Path, the second ability inside Death Shroud, is an easy way to apply two quick bleed stacks and also to close the gap if the enemy is fleeing. Use Scepter and Dagger for ranged damage and for duels. It is very easy to kite the enemy with some practice, as seen here. 
make sure to use Blood as Power, followed by Plague Signet often, as leaving Plague Signet off cooldown will cause you to pull conditions from your allies. In tournaments, this is generally intended, but if you're just doing random SPVP for fun, I recommend keeping it on cooldown. If anyone gets in melee range, switch to your staff. Remember that you have the AoE Bleed Sigil on it, so when you switch in combat, you will see rock spikes shoot up and apply bleeds to everyone around you. Immediately stack up marks 2 through 4, but use the Reaper's Mark, ability key 5, sparingly, as it can be very clutch when you need it. Putrid Mark transfers conditions from allies to foes when triggered, so if you're facing another condition damage build, it can turn the tide. The Elite Skill Plague is rather poor for damage output even with a Bleeds build, but quite handy for defense. You can dish out some decent AoE damage while staying alive for quite a while when it's active, so I generally save it for defense only. Signet of Undeath makes you an incredibly powerful teamfighter. It is important to know that it only works on teammates who are downed and not actually dead, so use Doom, the third ability inside Death Shroud, and Reaper's Mark to keep enemies from finishing your teammates, and follow up with a Signet of Undeath. If you are using this build for tournament play, remind your teammates that Signet of Undeath revives up to three allies in the area, so if they die near each other, you can basically reset the fight. There are a lot of abilities to choose from, but I feel Signet of Undeath is too powerful to overlook. If using the more AoE oriented skill set, stack up as many bleeds as you can on one target and then use Epidemic for great success. This works well paired with a teammate who also specializes in condition damage, as if you both stack on one target, you will spread their conditions as well. There are several benefits to this build that you won't see with others. Namely, once you've stacked up a lot of bleeds, you don't need to stay in line of sight or have vision of the enemy to continue damaging them or potentially killing them. Often, my target will go stealth or jump behind cover and die anyway without any effort on my end. This build also has a damage ramp up, meaning instead of doing constant damage, or high burst damage with low damage in between, you start out doing little damage, but as you build more stacks, your damage increases exponentially until your enemy falls to the overwhelming DPS. There are a few downsides you'll encounter while using this build. Support and point defense players will be a thorn in your side, especially guardians who specialize in removing conditions. This build is also very poor at destroying structures like gates, walls, and trebuchets and also player-made effects like turrets and the Ranger Elite Skill Binding Roots. Thanks for tuning in to my first Guild Wars 2 guide. Feel free to like, comment, and subscribe, and also let me know what you liked and didn't like about the video, as I am always open to all forms of feedback. If you have a specific guide request, let me know in the comment section below.